Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuild Series. Working on the Buick engine today. Last time you remember, we were stuck. We were stuck on the head and all based on our exhaust valve choice. So we're in process of resolving that, but at the same token, I have got to get this uh, short block assembled and, and put all together. So today's task is to get the cam bearings in, get the cam plug in, get the crankshaft in and start assembling it from the uh, bottom end. And in the meantime, we're gonna test fit a little different design. Actually, give me the other one, this one. We're gonna test fit a little different design of piston. Uh, I'm not real happy with what I got and uh, I got a little different idea this time. So we're gonna try that. This is a printed piston uh, that one of our very own did for us in his basement. Fantastic to have friends. And uh, structurally, obviously it's not gonna last, but dimensionally, it'll give me the, the nice surface up here so I can check my clearance because it'll fit nice and in, nicely on the piston rod assembly. And then of course go into the bore. There we go. We have a very slight snag here. This oil plug for the main feed rail, this plug has to be flush to the back of the block. Otherwise, the big adapter plate that comes on here obviously will not sit flush, it'll sit cockeyed. Uh, similar to like your, your cam plug back here also has to be flush to the back surface. So what I'm gonna have to do, unfortunately at this point, everything is clean and ready to assemble. I'm gonna have to take a tap down into this hole. This is a, a, a pipe tap, uh, which I did clean it up prior, but I didn't double check and make sure that plug would sit flush. So I'm going to have to come in here and run the tap through it. Now, obviously, as I go through and do this, I'm going to pick up paint and I'm going to pick up uh, steel. Now, what I can, what I'll be able to do, because there's a port right here, I can take and blow some air down through this and get most of it to come out. But then what I'll do, or what I found works quite well, is take a magnet, of course, put it into the hole, and you'll pick up all those, you know, shavings and such that are left behind by the tap. So that's the process. Obviously, it is not the best thing, but you also can't have the adapter plate sitting sideways. Oh, that's way better. I'm almost flush now. Not even close to, well, close to tight. Probably went too far. How's that look? Nice, huh? Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Woody Harrelson in that I don't like. Many promises though. 
Is that powder coating that you were? It's um, E coat, but it still has some amount of build. shave it out of those holes. We ran into a very small snag. So I had these adapter plates for the transmission. I had them E-coated. And this, the stud on the other plate didn't get uh, masked off, which is fine based on the process. You really can't. And then on, and then of course the mating hole. No big deal. I'm just gonna take a sanding roll on a die grinder, clean it out real quick, not trying to remove any material just the amount of e-coat it's it's only probably a thousandth but it's a tight fit so uh, we'll pull that off and be back in business All right, it's up on the big engine stand. Next step, I'm gonna throw the camshaft in, put the main bearings in, crankshaft, and get the timing chain and everything on the front. Moving forward. She's a tight one, boss. It's in there. I'll have to get a, uh, yeah. Oh, you need to okay, during the blueprinting process here of an engine, you always want to go through and measure your journals on your crankshaft and then relative to the bearings uh, when you put them into the block. So for instance, right now, what I'm working on specifically is knowing exactly what the crankshaft measures as far as each of the five main bearings and then I'm gonna take the bearing caps, torque them to spec into the block, and then measure that OD. The difference will give me the oil clearance. Now, there certainly are other ways to do that. You can use um, some stuff called plastic gauge, and uh, I prefer a set of micrometers. Um, well, because these are actual gauges opposed to the other. So, I, while the crankshaft's out, I'm gonna, I take advantage of measuring both the rod and the mains at the same time and have my crankshaft numbers. All right, so you'll notice that I've made a little upgrade from my last uh, engine build where I normally just throw this out on a piece of scratch paper. Now I, uh, I actually have a printed out version of a build sheet and I'm going to vet out what's actually needed from there.
And obviously I'm not making any changes to these journals, but I am verifying that what I asked for relative to size is what they ground it to, or there was no, you know, miscommunications in what I was asking for. So far everything looks, looks pretty good. So main torque spec is 90 to 100 foot pounds. I'm going to push it towards the 100 foot pounds and then, uh, then I can measure the ID. Otherwise the bearing is not compressed. All right, so you'll notice I do not have that backing plate on here yet because I am purely mocking things up and I did torque everything down and so on and so forth. But now I can take and put the rod on this plastic piston, set it down into the hole and it will rotate through its stroke and I'll set the head on obviously as well and check the valve clearance. And we also have the correct valves so we can rectify the issue that we had with these valves with this little edge on here. We now have some other ones and what it amounts to is they made them both ways. So we got the luck of the draw in the first batch where it had this little edge on there, wouldn't work for us and now we got it nice and smooth and I will not have to shave down my guide, you know, another three, four hundred thousandths. I can maximize how much um, length of that guide I have, which is what I was after. So next time we will finish their mock-up with that piston and get that design kicked off. And then we will also finish up the assembly on these heads. Of course, that's all God willing and we don't have an issue here again, but hey, we're making progress and that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. Sometimes you can see the windshield and sometimes you just see the bugs smacking the windshield. So, hey, Get out in the shop, get your work done. I'm done for the day, but I got plenty of stuff to do otherwise. But get out and enjoy the day. See ya.